Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a new device from GPD, which is the GPD Pocket 3, a small form factor computer with an 8 inch full HD display that's designed for IT professionals or others looking for sort of a little computer in that size. Uh, a couple of accessories that I will explain momentarily, but I just wanted to do a quick unboxing and first look in this video, uh, mostly because the crowdfunding campaign for this is going live uh, pretty soon, and I'm not going to have time to do a full review by then, so let's do a first look. Uh, so again, here we've got the GPD Pocket 3. It's a mini laptop computer, a little bit larger than the previous generation Pocket devices, but a little bit more versatile as well. So uh, first thing you'll notice here is it's a little large to actually fit in your pocket, I would say, unless you have very large pockets, but it is a very small computer for a laptop PC. We've got full-size HDMI and a USB Type-C port here, USB Type-A, but notice that there are two little screws here holding that in place. That's actually a modular slot, so we can actually swap it out for something else. We'll get into that later. Um, an H or a Ethernet port, two full-size USB ports, and a headset jack and speakers on either side. Uh, I call that USB-C, but it actually depends on the model that you get. On this version, that's gonna be a Thunderbolt port. On some models, it might not be. Um, we've got a large sort of vent down here on the bottom, screws holding everything together. We'll see if we can open it up at some point in the future. And when we lift the lid, you'll see here, it's got a kind of unusual design where we've got not quite a full-size keyboard, but a, a keyboard that should be large enough for touch typing, I think. And above it is the power button, a touchpad, and left and right click and center buttons here for navigation. It's also a convertible with a screen that flips 180 degrees. Let's uh, see if we can see that a little bit better if I put this down. So you can lift it open, flip the screen 180 degrees, and then fold it down and hold it like a tablet. So that's uh, basically what's in the box. We've also got a USB Type-C power adapter, a pen, which is an optional accessory. It's not necessarily going to be included uh, unless you pay extra for it, but a digital pen should support pressure-sensitive input, and comes with a battery. We've got a couple of buttons here, pressure-sensitive tip there. Seems pretty nice. A uh, lanyard that you can use to uh, attach, I think, to this section right around here. Yeah, right there. And so you can sort of hang, hold it. Um, it's a little on the heftier side for a handheld device. Let me see if I can get a weight on it real quick. It's about two pounds. And as I mentioned, there's a modular section that allows you to actually swap out that USB type A port for other accessories. And what I was supplied with here are two options. One is a serial port. So you can unscrew this, slap in the serial port, and then use this uh, for RS-232 connections. Not something that most casual users are necessarily going to need, but it might be something that you could use in industrial or IT settings or commercial applications if you wanted to use this as, um, I don't know, I guess a lot of cash registers and other sorts of uh, machines use serial ports still. And then the other one, which I'm having a difficult time opening because there is a little bit of tape on it, is really interesting, and I don't know that I have a cable that'll work with this, so I might need to pick one up to test it. But this is a uh, KVM switch, so you can actually connect this to another device uh, using two cables. So you can use HDMI input as opposed to the HDMI output. So you plug in HDMI output here, and you can connect an external display. If you use the HDMI input, you can connect an external computer or other device, plug it in here, and use this as a screen and then you can use the USB uh, Type-C port here for uh, touch and keyboard or you know, other forms of input. And so the idea is that I can take this with me, say, to a server room, uh, use that KVM switch module in here and plug it into a server or any sort of headless computer. And now I have access to that remote 
machine right here on the device. Um, another thing that sets this apart from most of GPD's previous generation devices is that there is a webcam here. Uh, I don't necessarily have real high hopes for a webcam, but it is something that you don't see on a lot of their devices. So uh, new features include that convertible tablet style design, uh, inclusion of a webcam, the touchpad is something we've only seen previously on the GPD micro PC up until now. Uh, this is a little bit larger than the micro PC, and while it might be a little harder to hold in one hand and thumb type, because it's kind of hard to reach across, it is large enough for touch typing, I would say, and uh, the screen is going to be a little bit larger and more comfortable for a lot of uh, purposes. So it's still a pretty portable machine. Let's see if it has any power here and if I can turn it on. Uh, there's also a fingerprint reader built into the power button, and we've got a backlit keyboard as well. In terms of specifications and pricing, uh, this is going to sell for, well, there's two versions. There's a version that's going to have an Intel uh, Pentium Silver N6000 Jasper Lake processor, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, and uh, 512 gigabytes of storage. And that version is priced at about 650 and up, and that's not including these optional uh, additional uh, ports. For 999 and up, there is a version with uh, an Intel Core i7 1195G7 processor. Hi there. I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. A little sign in here. 16 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of storage. And that's actually the version that GPD sent me for the purposes of this review. That version is going to sell for about $9.99 and up. And they're both going to be available for pre-order starting on November 5th, Beijing time, uh, at 10 a.m. Or that's 10 p.m. November 4th, East Coast time, 2021. Uh, for about 30% off, I believe those prices is what I was told. That's obviously going to be subject to change. I don't know if it's limited quantities, but that's the crowdfunding idea here. So um, just give you a sort of quick look here at navigation. Might take a little getting used to using the built-in system here. Let's see if I can connect to the internet real quick. And yeah, now the keyboard, the layout seems pretty good. We've got some sort of half-size keys down here in the bottom, uh, some half-height page up and page down, uh, down keys. But overall, I, I kind of like the layout here. Uh, there's a little bit of space between all the keys. I think it should make typing a relatively comfortable experience. Uh, there is room for all the number and uh, function keys. And then there's some special function keys up here above that for volume and so forth. Might take a little getting used to the fact that the brackets and the dash and plus and equal signs are up here. Uh, escape and print screen are up there. In some previous generation devices from uh, companies like GPD and One Netbook, we've seen some of these keys sort of doubled up with maybe the caps attached to the A, for instance. Uh, this tab key is kind of small, but I'll be uh, I'll be curious to see uh, what I can find out about battery life, general perform uh, general purpose performance, typing, uh, generally using this as a computer. As somebody who's not an IT administrator, I would love to be able to check this out, um, but it's not necessarily the, the make or break feature for me. But I do really like this size of computer. I think the 8-inch screen gives you a little bit more room for that uh, nearly full-sized or closer to full-size keyboard for comfortable typing than you get on some of those 7-inch models. And that's sort of a trade-off that you get with this larger screen. Um, but overall, it's an interesting device that I'm looking forward to to, uh, to learning more about. All right, so somewhat unsurprisingly, um, when I tried to log into Windows, it caused a little bit of a problem because I'm recording this video using my phone, and my phone is also my multi-factor authentication for my Microsoft account. So anyway, uh, here I am logged into Windows. Let's take a quick look around while we're here. Uh, this is not going to be real in-depth. This is literally just a first look video, but you can see that the uh, screen, the touch screen seems to work. Out of the box, it was actually set to 200% scaling. The one thing that I did just now is change it to 150 just so I can fit more stuff on the screen. Because with a 1920 by 1200 pixel display at 200% scaling, it's a little bit uh, difficult to sort of make anything out. Let's go ahead and open up a web browser here.
Seems pretty zippy and responsive. Let's try a typing test. This is after having not taken any time at all to get used to the keyboard, remember. All right, 67 words a minute, uh, one typo, adjusted to 66. That's a little on the low side for me. I can usually get more in the 80 to 100 range. But first, you know, out of the box try here with the keyboard. You saw I sort of had to hunt for a couple of keys. Once you get used to them, it should be a little bit easier. Uh, speaking of that keyboard, looks like we've got one level of backlight control on or off. Um, we've got access to screen brightness, volume up and down and a couple of other things like that. And one other thing that I wanted to take a quick look at here is the stylus. So let's do a quick, um, open up Microsoft Paint. That's the opposite of what I wanted to do. Okay, my handwriting's bad enough as it is normally, but um, let's see. Okay, so neither of those function as an eraser, do they? Not out of the box. Uh, what about palm rejection? Not seeing any problems there. Maybe a little bit of resistance there, but overall seems to get the job done. Um, not seeing any automatic screen rotation here. Might be a setting that needs to be adjusted. Talent mode. So one problem with changing the display scaling might be, okay, so it looks like, I mean, I can manually flip, but it doesn't seem to want to do it automatically. So that is definitely something I'm going to need to look into. be odd to put out a convertible tablet and not have a sensor that adjusts that. But, you know, you could always just do it the old fashioned manually if you had to, I suppose. And that's what it would look like as a handheld device. And then you could sort of take your notes or do whatever you need to do. Um, not perfect, but it works. And then as a convertible, you can use it as just a display. Whoop, flip the screen around, use it this way, hold it in your hands, hold it in one hand, or put it down on a table. So that is, again, just a first look, the out-of-the-box experience of the GPD Pocket 3. 
Uh, I'm not ready to pass judgment on it. I do like the size and feel of it. It's an interesting device. It's uh, unlike really anything else that GPT has put out before. It's like a cross between their P2 Max and their micro PC in terms of size, specs, and features. Uh, it's similar in some ways to uh, competitor One Netbook's A1 series, which also has a convertible tablet style design, also has ports that are really geared towards IT administrators, but has a bigger screen than the handheld GPT micro PC. So it's um, definitely a niche device. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you can already see that this hinge is a little bit less sturdy than the typical hinges that would have uh, you know one on each side and let you flip the screen over all the way backwards. This one does not go all the way around 360 degrees. It sort of stops here at just over 180, I would say. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what purpose that serves other than that it makes these ports on the back accessible. So we've got this uh, Ethernet jack and we've got this modular port that we can change out. Uh, I suppose it also allows for one of the vents to be here. So we've got air intake on the bottom and air out here. Um, so that is the, uh, the GPD Pocket Three. More details coming soon. Stay tuned for Lilliputing's uh, more in-depth review. Uh, you can check out links in the description of this video for the crowdfunding campaign and more information about this little computer. Um, yeah, so far I'm, I'm intrigued. I will definitely say that I'm intrigued.